2022 sucks. In fact, the last couple years sucked. I used to have a top 5 best game series covering each year since 1998. Every year it was more and more difficult to make a list since we sometimes had more than 20 contenders for the number 1 spot. The last couple though, no worry, releases have disappeared for the most part, new games seem to be bloated with all kinds of garbage, slow and meaningless, grindy gameplay, old rehashes, broken remasters and so on. That's why the 2021 and 2022 videos will have to wait. Until then, however, I have something special. Here's a list of all the 39 games I played and completed in 2022. These are not all games released in 2022, but ones which I did beat this year. Many of them are garbage, but others are incredible. Please don't be mad if I trash talk a game you like. Let's be civilized and have a nice conversation in the comment section. We'll begin with the worst and work our way to the best game I beat in 2022. Let's go! One of the worst games I have had the displeasure of playing. I can't believe I beat this garbage duo extremely repetitive, boring and unnecessarily lengthy. I zoned out multiple times and I ended up having to open up a podcast in a separate window so I don't fall asleep while playing this crap. I like point and click games, but this one just didn't grab me, very forgettable story, predictable as well, open ended finale, which means it's a sequel bait. I'm glad I played it honestly, but I'm not interested in the franchise at all. My third time trying to beat this game and I finally did it, I can see why I stopped so many times. The idea is great, but the execution is not. Every aspect of this garbage game is done heaps better in Underground 2, which is one of my favorite games of all time. This one has all full rubber banding, nonsensical progression, random difficulty spikes and very boring tracks. Easily the worst Nekopara game I've played them all and this one is the only one which I didn't engage with at all. Well established characters were given new personalities, your sister is horny as hell, which is very weird cause look at her man. Yeah this was a problem in the previous games too but here is just so blatant and cringy. Also the game took 11 hours to beat when only 3 would have been enough. It's just a terrible finale to a decent visual novel franchise. Shame. Second time beating this one actually and honestly my streams of this game were not that great. I died way too much, I was under leveled because I tried to rush it and I don't think that this game is worthy of a second playthrough. The first time I played solo I loved it but on stream uh, I should have played something else. I didn't even finish the single DLC, something which a year ago I immediately went for after finishing the main game. For some the best stalker game, for me the worst stalker game. Not a big fan of the franchise as a whole, but this one just rubbed me the wrong way. Lots of open area, too much walking in a very very empty and boring land, factions who hate each other while operating under the same roof, only a few feet apart, while in the previous games if they saw each other they would go ham and there would be trouble. The jank is still here as well. Sure some improvements were made, but the downgrades were even more so, so I'm not impressed. I love GTA games and have beaten this one at least 5 times. This time however I spiced it up with a winter mode and honestly GTA 4 is not made for such sliding mechanics. It completely ruins the experience and makes driving even worse than it is. I love this game but not this mod. Don't be fooled, this game is a complete lie, it's not an engaging story, it's not a horror game and it's not a game you should waste your time on. Marfa is Dead has so 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 much potential that I'm actually angry they ruined it with poor writing, so much forced gore and a terrible performance. This could have been a masterpiece if they just put some more work into it, it's a unique idea but it was completely wasted. A game I played since 2003 and I had the misfortune of installing a chaos mod with it. This might be the worst chaos mod I have ever seen for any video game. Repetitive effects, 
bet you I crashes and so on, while a Love Vice City this playthrough was all full. A game with a very good story and characters which has a really boring world to explore. I dislike forced and open worlds like this one where there's nothing to do. The snow looks gorgeous, the setting is amazing, I love learning stuff about the olden times and of course finding all the Playboy magazines. It is not better in the first game unfortunately. A fun racing game of a subgenre which is not seen much nowadays. RC Cars. It reminds me so much of my Revolt days from the past and it's overall pure clean fun. Some objectives were pretty annoying though and should not have been in the game. Also the game is pretty glitchy where I'm pretty sure I couldn't even finish the last course since I have a Windows 10 system but I'm not installing XP just to play this. The beginning of Raft is something incredible. Build up your raft and explore the vast ocean, find gear, upgrade your arsenal and become an unstoppable force. Unfortunately to progress and unlock everything you gotta follow the awful story. Each island you visit is worse than the last, it's very slow to progress, voice acting is garbage and fighting is worse than Skyrim's combat. Imagine that! If I ever play it again I'm just installing a mod which unlocks all recipes from the store because the survival aspect are really tough. Top notch. The only great Shadow Warrior is the reboot from 2013 and everything before it. 2 and 3 I would call uh, meh. They're fun, don't get me wrong, but I can't help but compare it to 2013 which was a masterpiece. 3 is very 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 short, as soon as you get used to the mechanics it just ends. I expected more but hey it was still kinda fun. This game really shows its age and despite that it's one of the best stories ever told. It's actually difficult, it has unique shooting mechanics I haven't seen much since then and honestly it still holds up to an extent. It really made me feel like part of the Mafia. I still remember most characters despite playing it in January and I would like to play it again. Well, uh, hmm, I did, kinda, <laughs> more on that later on the list. As a teen this game was a pain in my behind, so many sleepless nights and I still couldn't manage to get a medal on all levels. Well, 15 or more years later I am now the ultimate champion. This is the best Trackmania in my opinion, I like the humble beginnings and I don't like the ultra mega precision, stunting and movement required in the later games. Very difficult game but I'm glad I finally put it to rest. Dude, the soundtrack of this game is superb! I love the visuals, I love the characters, I love the setting, the colors and everything else. It's my second time beating it and definitely it was not as good as the first time but I'm glad I did. I'm sorry but this game is not that great for me. Sure combat and exploration are great and fluid but I'm just so sick and tired of superhero media man. I'm tired of every blockbuster hit of a movie being a superhero one where the main character has some bullshit superpower and beats up monsters 10 times stronger than him. The same for games. Just stop wearing this dumb outfit and live your life Peter. I only play this game because it came out on PC and people just don't shut up about it. Well here, I played it, now stop reminding me it exists, please. Oof, I'm sure glad we don't have another Spider-Man game with the same city, characters, mechanics and... Oh no! This re-release of Stanley Parable outdid itself and added a lot to the base game. The original was decent and had a very unique idea, this one adds a lot to the strangeness and I had many WTF moments as I played it. Surely it's a game everybody should play at least once and by the way you can beat it in 10 seconds if you don't like it initially. I beat San Andreas twice this year with two different mods, Chaos was actually really fun. My viewers chose effects and they messed with me throughout. Alien City though was incredible, a total conversion which transforms San Andreas into an almost completely new game. There's a story, new characters, vehicles, sounds and voice acting. Seriously how many mods have voice acting? Go play this, it's from 5 to 10 hours long, but you won't regret it if you like the original.
Second time being this and it's as fun as it always was. Alan Wake holds up greatly and since I forgot the big plot twist since I played it initially many years ago, I enjoyed it the second time. The flashlight mechanic is the big standout to me and I have not even seen other games use it to the degree this one did. Second time beating this slog, honestly if this game was 10 hours long I would call it a masterpiece, but I simply cannot, it's way too boring throughout, movement is garbage, there's too much horse riding and so on. It's high up here because I love the story, the characters and the world, no other game tops it in some of these aspects and I see why so many people call it the best game of all time. It's just too slow for me to put it higher up, but hey, after over 140 hours in two full playthroughs, I'm willing to give it another go. This is just more serious Sam. I loved every entry up to this point, well, <laughs> 2 was a bit questionable, but still fun. Siberian Mayhem I would place on the second worst spot in the franchise and that's only because it's way, way, way too short, way too buggy and the story is a bit boring. I love arena shooters though and the huge wide open spaces where you have a bajillion bullets and a bajillion monster spawn never gets out. This DLC compared to Cuphead, honestly it's not that great. While in Cuphead you fail because of your own mistakes, here you fail because of stuff out of your control, random objects pop into the screen all the time, lots of attacks from the enemies are not indicated very well, making you guess and so on, as a standalone game it's still great though, each boss battle was awesome, I just wish they didn't have this many random attacks which you can't really learn the patterns of. I beat Minecraft again for maybe the 20th time, this time in 1.18, not the best version honestly, but it's still the old Minecraft I've been playing since 2011, I hate the practicality of the new caves, but I love the look of them. It was fun showing chat, my expert combat skills and them laughing along with my stupidity. Once again, a game I've been trying to beat for over 15 years just like Trackmania, only this one is actually easy. Well, easier than it was 15 years ago when I was a dumb teen who had no reflexes. Nowadays with many FPS games under my belt, it took me just under 4 hours. <laughs> Alarasode is amazing and it reminded me of how great FPS was back in the day before publishers realized they can monetize every single aspect of the game and shove in pay to win microtransactions and forced multiplayer. Ugh, I wish all games were this pure nowadays. Don't be fooled, this is not Shovel Knight, the best platformer of all time. This is a procedurally generated platformer which is also a roguelike. That really does not mix together but I gotta admire the style of this game, despite the clear downgrade since it's also a mobile title. It really should not hold the Shovel Knight name honestly since it's not that, but as a standalone it's pretty fun. This is a very relaxing and slightly difficult game, I love the environment, music and our small glowy character, good vibes all around, the story is very touching and even after a second playthrough, it's as great as it was before. I initially hated this game years ago when I had to restart a whole 5 hour playthrough because my driver flat out died in the middle of a race. Yes, in a rally game you can die. If you take it slow and careful though, this is actually a proper rally experience which is almost at the level of Colin McRae rally games. Of course it looks dated nowadays but the mechanics are great and I had fun. Blast from the past, they don't make them like they used to anymore, this is whatever you want it to be, a racer or a demolition derby, there are many ways you can beat a race and that's why it's so fun, total dismemberment of cars, complete destruction, mayhem and a huge, huge open area you can get lost in, filled with power ups, traps and secrets, I loved it 20 years ago and I love it now. Glad I finally finished it for the first time. 
We had a Hot Wheels DLC before, but this one is a bit better, I think. Lots of speed, you can use pretty much any car, new vehicles look and sound nice, not the best DLC by any means, but it's still fun going around, completing challenges. Yep, yeah, at this game I really don't understand why people hate so much. Sure, for a GTA game it's not that great, but so is GTA Chinatown Wars. Why does this one get so much slack? The story is fine, it's difficult, characters are throwbacks to GTA 3. If you dismiss this title because of the graphics, then I suggest you give it another try or at least watch my full review linked below in the description. GTA 3 with one hit point. Now that's a challenge. I beat the game over 10 times, probably even 20 with one HP. And after so many tries, I did it without dying once. It was my favorite challenge this year and I loved every second of it, even the bullshit deaths which were not my fault. All of it is documented on my VODs channel too, so go check it out. Next up is Vice City. Oh ho 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 boy, this is the best remake of a game I have ever seen. They took an already amazing but dated game, brought it to the modern era, but guess what, they didn't completely break it with predatory bullshit. It's a pure recreation of a great game, sure it's dumbed down a bit and this remake is much easier, but it's much more accessible and much more fun to play. I wish more devs would make proper remakes. This one completely flew under my radar, the NFS franchise died with me with payback, but Heat, Heat is a true return to form. I love this game from the races in the day to the police chases at night. The mayhem was through the roof and I'm amazed EA could pull this off. Especially with how crap they have become. Way to go EA, I just wish you realized that making good games is a way of being successful, not by using predatory nonsense. Well, this finally released on PC. I played it on PS4, but I didn't really get much into it. On PC though, I fell in love with the world of Kratos. So much so that I really wanna emulate the older games and play them too. I just got so much into the lore. Great story, characters, world and so on. You know the drill, <laughs> no need for me to tell you how great this game is. Chances are you already beat it. Same as NFS Heat, I didn't even know this game existed until recently, this is a true hidden gem and I have no idea why more people are not talking about it. My life up to this point was empty not knowing about this game. It's so unique in what it does that I have no idea why more devs have not copied it. Exploration is really fun, you care about each character, the story progression has a great pace, the world, oh man, the world they built. It's just a shame the franchise died with this title and that the sequel might not even get a release. I didn't think I would like this at first, but 70 hours later and 20 completions later. <laughs> Hello, this is I, the ultimate Hades lover. I love the work of Supergiant Games, their games are just something else, man. Not just in the visual department, which is awesome, but they can nail a good gameplay. I went through the same exact level at least 500 times in this game, in my attempts, and not once did I say, damn, this is boring. With the thousands of power-up variations, you can never get bored here. I hate cats. Cats are evil and I am allergic to them. With this set, Stray is awesome not because you play as a cat, the cat part would actually be a turn off from me. I just needed a game like this in 2022, man, with all the crap I had to go through in my personal and business life this year. Stray was a perfect escape from it, an incredibly peaceful experience in a beautiful world, unique story, easy to solve puzzles. It's my jam. Speaking of jams, however... 
Game of the year goes to Metal Hell Singer. This game is a huge contrast to Stray. You don't play this game to relax. No, no, no. You're constantly on your feet, jumping around, slashing and shooting enemies. And no, this is not a Doom ripoff. Not even close. You only shoot when the music tells you. You only dash when the music tells you. You only think. When the music tells you this soundtrack is the boss and you must obey. Do I not make sense? Good. Play this game. If you're a metal fan like myself, if you like gore, high action gaming and love Doom-esque gameplay, then you need to play this masterpiece GOATEE 2022 for sure. Sorry Elden Ring lovers. Speaking of lovers, I love everybody who watched this video. Let me know if I should do the same list, but for all the movies and TV shows I watched for 2022. Putting together such a video takes a lot of effort, so I won't do it unless you guys tell me to. Thank you for watching and a very special thank you to Rain Tess, SMRJ, Paris Bruce Lane, Monish Pradeep, Case Knights, Epic LF, Shinte, Clint McCurdy, Clint Pentacles, Jacob Nadley, Karizak Kiori, Max Robinson, Jim Francesco, Zola Vilikanin and everybody else on the screen.